This morning my attention is turned to the epistle to of Romans, the 8th chapter in Romans. <clears throat> and the theme of this message is life in the spirit. <clears throat> when we, the plan of salvation un, is unfolded to us, the Lord begins to open our understanding and give us revelation. We see how beautiful everything fits together and how the Lord works everything out. How he knows the needs and the frailties of us in this humanity and what he has provided for us. And if you read the 14th and 15th and 16th chapters of the Gospel of John, you see the Gospel of John is different than the other three Gospels. And there it, he, he delves more into uh, the time that in this, those three chapters where Jesus is sequestered with his disciples. And he begins to explain <coughs> that he must go, but he's sending another comforter to come, praise God. And he <clears throat> begins to open their understanding and tell them the things that, uh, the basic things about the Holy Spirit and, and what he's gonna do. And I'm sure, I'm sure they didn't quite grasp it all, <clears throat> not knowing how the Holy Spirit was gonna come, not knowing exactly what he was totally explaining to them, but they heard the words and it stayed in their hearts. And he told them in, I believe, the 16th chapter, he said, I, there's many things I have to tell you, but you can't bear them now. There's many more things you need to know, but you can't bear them now. But when he has come, when the Holy Spirit has come, he'll reveal those things to you, praise God. And here in this 8th chapter, we have Paul's understanding, explanation of the gospel. It's so deep. There's so much in here that's it's just amazing. And he tells us in the seventh chapter, we're not going to touch on that at all, but he said that the law is powerless to deliver us from the sinful nature and its sinful desires. All the law could tell us is that we were guilty. We couldn't live up to the law. It gave us no power. It just said, here are the parameters. Here are the limits. You can't, and what we found is we can't live with those limits. And he says, oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me? From this body of death. And in the 8th chapter. He begins to answer. That, that uh, question. Or that, that uh, statement. First verse. There is therefore now. Now. No condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit. Praise God. Amen. Oh hallelujah. I'm going to read it again. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Praise God. He's talking about <clears throat> condemnation and sometimes Christians get confused with condemnation and conviction. And there is a difference. Praise God. Condemnation <clears throat> has to do with our, our, our situation, our relationship with the law. Our condemnation <clears throat> has to do with our, our relationship with him, praise God. It's, it, it leads to punishment. Condemnation is punishment. But you see, we're in Christ Jesus now. And Christ came and paid the price. He took the punishment for you and I. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation deals with punishment. Conviction is discipline. God shows us where we made mistakes, where we failed. Not to be lost, but to point us to the blood of Jesus that cleanses all sin. Oh, praise God. Aren't you glad for that this morning? No condemnation. We, we've been taken out of our lost estate. One who is not in Christ Jesus is, is not, <clears throat> not in his presence. His, his end is, is, not, is going to be in hell. That's what the word of God tells us. His end is going to be in hell in judgment. Amen. But praise God, we've been taken out of the world of darkness We've been taken out of it, praise God, by being in Christ Jesus. I want to dwell on that for a few moments. What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? We're going to go to the Word of God and, and explain what that means to be in Christ Jesus. Would you turn with me to the 
1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. You know, we hear many people and we see on tombstones and uh, in Christ, uh, in Christ, they're in Christ, I'm in Christ. Well, how are you in Christ? Well, I go to Evangelical Full Gospel Assembly. Does that make me in Christ? No, no. that doesn't do it. Well, I, I, uh, I, you know, I, I pray once in a while or whatever. Does that make me in Christ? Not necessarily. What is it to be in Christ? He said, what a, the definition of a Christian is one who is in Christ. And here we find in this 12th chapter, 13th verse, Paul begins to elaborate. For by one spirit, in my Bible it's a capital S, meaning Holy Spirit, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Praise God. We're baptized into the body by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that makes us into the body of Christ. Yeah. Jews or Gentiles. Remember when Peter went to Cornelius' home? A Gentile didn't have, didn't know the law that well, didn't maybe know nothing about it, but he prayed to God. <laughs> And God sent Peter, and Peter began to evangelize Jesus Christ. And while they were yet speaking, the word says, the Holy Ghost fell on them in the whole house, and they heard them speak in tongues. Praise God. Oh, glory to his name. Jews, Gentiles, praise God, all been made to drink into one spirit. What does that mean? That means to be in the body of Christ. To be in Christ, we need to be baptized. Yeah. Amen? Yes. No amens. Amen. A few amens. It's all right. It's the word. Yeah. It's the word. Go with me to Romans, the sixth chapter, and verse three. It says, Know ye not? That so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. What baptism is he talking about there? Not the water baptism. The water baptism has no regeneration power. It's, it's symbolic. It's, it's a, a witness. Yeah. An outward expression of what has taken place in the heart. Yeah. But we're baptized into his death. Praise God. Into his death. That... that because of being baptized into his death, we're able to experience the blessings of his resurrection. Paul wrote to Colossians, Colossians, he says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Then he goes on to say, for your you are dead and your life is hid in Christ Jesus. The old man has been crucified. It's dead. That's where God wants the old man to be. He wants it to be dead. He wants it to be nailed to the cross because we're resurrected in newness of life, praise God. You are dead and your life is hid in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Baptized into his death, praise God. One more scripture. Go to Galatians, if you will, third chapter. <clears throat> The 27th verse. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Praise God. As many of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. The new man. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. The new man. New creatures. In Christ Jesus, we put on Christ, praise God. The old man is dead. The old man is, is subdued. The old man is, is under. Praise God. New creatures in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let me go back to Romans. Therefore, it is now, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, I'm gonna, I, I, I love what he does here, the Holy Spirit does in this passage. Who are in Christ, okay. In Christ, we just read, baptized into the body. To be in Christ is to be baptized. Amen. To be in the body of Christ. Where does that leave, you know, let me just pause here a moment. Where does that leave those that are not baptized? There is where the enemy attacks. Well, what's going to happen? If I die before I receive the Holy Ghost, what happens? <clears throat> well, brother and sister, that's entering into judgment. I don't know what God does in the last moments. God is sovereign. God can do what he wants. But God is faithful, too. He will not leave us. If, if we're seeking the Lord, if we're, if we're trying to follow him, and we're seeking all the things that God has for us, God is going to be faithful and take care of us. Praise God. Yeah. He's going to be with us. Praise God. He's not going to let us go. Yeah. Yeah. The enemy wants to point to judgment. Let's, let's okay, where, where do we put this person and where do we put that person? And where do I put grandma? And where do I put grandpa? And where do I put my uncle or my nephew or my son or daughter? We don't put them anywhere. The word of God tells us we're not to judge. We're not to put anybody anywhere. We're to believe the word and follow the Lord and do what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. Amen. Oh, praise God. Does the Holy Spirit baptism guarantee me getting to heaven? No. No. Because the word says, he that persevereth to the end, the same shall be saved. It's our walk with the Lord all the way to the end, praise God. There's going to be people baptized with the Holy Ghost that aren't going to make it. I hate to say that. I'm, I'm sorry to have to say that, but that's the reality. Well, I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost and I can do what I want and everything's good and I'm fine and, and everything's okay. No, 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 that's not it. We got to live the life who walk not after the spirit, I walk after the flesh, but after the spirit, praise God, he qualifies it here. Those who are in Christ, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, praise God. Can we be baptized with the Holy Ghost and walk in the flesh? Oh, Absolutely. Sometimes we have our daily dalliances with that, don't we? Yeah. We lose our temper, we're going down the road, somebody cuts us off and we're yelling and screaming and raising our fist or whatever the situation. You know how things are. And it's a daily battle. It's a daily spiritual battle in our hearts, praise God. You can't satisfy. God knew that you and I can't live the life without the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why he sent, that's why Jesus spoke. He says, I'll send another comforter, one called alongside to help, one like me who will abide with you forever. Praise God. And he told him before he ascended, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What kind of power is he talking about? Power to live life. Power to say no to the devil, no to the flesh, no to sin. That's the power he's talking about, praise God. And you and I need that power, praise God. And here Paul explains in his 8th chapter of Rome, oh, who can deliver, who wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of death? Only God can through the power of the Holy Ghost. You pray for the Holy Ghost, don't pray for the, don't seek the tongues. Seek the baptizer. Amen? Amen. Seek the one. Praise God. The Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Christ. And Christ dwells in our heart by faith. By the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Seek the baptizer. And he'll take care of the rest. Praise God. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the Spirit. Oh Lord. Would you help us this morning. That we walk. He's describing here. The life in the spirit, what it really is. And there's so much more I want to go on. Let me just pause here for one more moment. 
A preacher once said, and I wrote this down, conviction is the protection of God on your future. It's God going, I'm protecting you. It's the yellow light to slow down. This is our counsel right here. You and I don't have a right to say, I like this, but I don't like this. I like what this says, but I don't like what that says. We don't have a right to say that. It's God's word. Praise God. Conviction. Some people don't like, I don't like conviction. I don't want to, I don't want to feel bad. I don't, I don't want the, the Lord to, to, you know, put me down. He's not putting you down. The Lord is alerting you. The Lord is saying, look, you're messing up. You need to straighten out. And the Holy Spirit is the truth teller. And he points us to Christ. And immediately, immediately when the Holy Spirit is within us and around us too. But when he's within us, immediately when we do something, we sense it. It's immediate. The, the Holy Spirit alerts us and notifies us. That wasn't right. Lost your temper. You lost your temper and you said some hurtful things. And you knew you were doing it while you were doing it. The Holy Spirit is saying this isn't the way. Amen. But you did it anyway because of the carnal man taking over for a few moments. Amen. Can I get a witness? You're with me on this? Have you ever felt yourself like you're outside your body and you're looking at yourself and you're going, I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> I've had that experience. I'm saying, you know, Lord, help me. And it's, it's, thank God over time the Lord has helped and strengthened me to say, Lord, help me be under control. Amen. Praise God. Conviction helps us and points to the blood of Jesus. Oh, praise God. I love what Peter wrote to really kind of corroborate what we're saying here. I need a bigger desk here. <laughs> Forgive me. In, in first, second Peter, and it really goes along. He says, according as his divine power, the Holy Spirit hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us unto glory and virtue. His divine power, the Holy Spirit power, has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these, what's the precious promises? The first one is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a promise. It, I send you the, the promise of the Father. Praise God. Jesus told him, I send you the promise of the Father. Praise God. Precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. When the Holy Spirit comes in, it's the divine nature within us. Praise God. You see, there's two natures within us when the Holy Spirit comes in. We've got the old man, the carnal man, and we've got the new man, the divine, the, the divine nature man. Because of the Holy Spirit. God didn't try to fix up the old nature. It was beyond repair. He, he couldn't do anything with it. He had to give us a new nature. And the new nature has to dominate the old nature. That's why he says, crucify the deeds of the flesh. Crucify them. Put them down. Kill them. Destroy the deeds of the flesh. Let me go on to finish this. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Then he goes on to add to this various characteristics. I want to pause right there and go back to Romans. God knew what we needed. That we're incapable. With our best intentions. With our determination. With the thoughts of, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do better. I'm going to try harder. It's not trying harder. It's releasing yourself and allowing the Spirit of God to work through you. Amen. We can try harder all you want, and we're still going to fail. Because that's what Paul came to the realization. You know, the law can't 
I couldn't do anything. Oh, wretched man that I am. All I saw were my imperfections. All I saw that I couldn't look, live up to the dictates of, of the law. But Jesus came, praise God, um, with the covenant of grace and forgiveness, praise God, and the blood of Jesus that cleanses all. Oh, praise the Lord this morning. Oh, praise God. The Bible explains that we can be convicted of sin while not being condemned. The Holy Spirit makes us aware of sin without giving us the sense of condemnation. Praise the Lord. There's some folks that don't like conviction. I, I don't want to go and feel bad. I, I, don't want, I don't want that. The Holy Spirit's not about trying to make you happy. There is joy in the Holy Ghost. That's true. But he's not about to try to make you happy. He's trying to make you holy. Amen. That's the key. He's trying to make you And when we're holy, when we're living in that holiness, when we're living in that, that union with God the Father, God the Son through the Holy Spirit, Praise God, there is joy. There is happiness. There's satisfaction. All the problems seem to diminish. Oh, they're there. They haven't gone away. They're still there. The situation hasn't changed, but our heart has changed. And the, the thoughts of our mind, knowing that God's in control. Oh, praise the Lord. I love what John they in his gospel, I reference these 14, 15, and 16 chapters. And he says, it says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Very specific. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And here's the beautiful verse. At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. It's not the preacher that says you're okay. It's not a board of deacons that pronounces, well, hey, you're, you're all right. You're going to heaven. Oh, no, nothing, nothing that minuscule. It's the Holy Spirit that witnesses within us that we belong to him. And further on in Romans, it says, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The familiar term of father, like dad or daddy. We cry, Abba, Father, because we've been received the spirit of adoption. Adoption into the body, into the, in the sonship of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let me go on and finish with Romans. He goes on to say, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, second verse, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are of the, after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. This, this carnal mind, this carnal man is not, cannot be subject to the law of God. It can't be because it is sinful. Yeah. That enmity is irreconcilable hatred. So the they that are in the flesh cannot please God. We've got to walk in the spirit. We can be baptized in the spirit and still not please God because we're walking in the flesh. Walking in the spirit, praise God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit of so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 
And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Oh, praise the Lord. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. It is the Holy Spirit when the rapture comes that is going to raise, if we're in the grave, it's going to raise our dead bodies out of the grave. It is that Holy If the Spirit dwells in you, if the Spirit dwells in you, brother and sister, the importance and necessity of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is paramount. And it's not just to say, well, I received the label. I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost. I'm good for heaven and that's it. I just can sit in the pew and just chill. No, absolutely not. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. God has put his spirit within you for a reason. That you might be used for the kingdom that, that you might exercise through the Holy Ghost. That you might be an encouragement and a, a witness We kind of plateau out, oh, I'm baptized now. The big emphasis on receiving the baptism, that's great. Praise the Lord. Thank God now. Continue to walk. Continue to run the race. You're just a babe in Christ. you got to grow. God didn't have his son die on the cross. Shed his blood for your sins that we can be reconciled back together. That he could cleanse the temple. That he could place his Holy Spirit with us to sit in the pew three times a week. Amen. That's not what he did it for. Right. That the Spirit of God can use us in prayer, in exhortation, in encouragement, in comfort. As a witness, a testimony. The world is looking for truth. They're looking for something. They're looking for... The, they don't even realize what they're looking for. They're empty. They're lost. They're searching for some kind of entertainment or enjoyment. Something to fill in the blanks. To know they're empty. And the only one that can do it is Jesus Praise God, when he comes in by his Holy Spirit, he dwells within us. Praise God. Oh, we walk and talk with him. We, it's, it's like returning to the state, Adam and Eve, before they sinned, that God came in the garden and at the noonday or wherever it was and just be, and walked and talked with them. That's how it is when the Holy Spirit comes in and we're walking in the Spirit. There is that sweet communion. And this is not, not to keep anybody out of heaven. You think that's God's intention? Is it possible someone could even believe that? It's not the baptized and the unbaptized. God doesn't, God, God doesn't look at that as a distinction. He, it is a distinction, but he doesn't look at that as separating. That once the Holy Spirit, you see, it's all the work of the Holy Spirit. How do you think you came to Revelation? How do you think you came to the point of wanting to take the water baptism? Was that in your, that was you? You, you, said, you watch people and say, well, you know, I think I'm going to join a church and I'll just have a dip. <laughs> that wasn't you. The Spirit of God was speaking to you. The Spirit of God was drawing you. That's why he said he is with you. He is with you. How do you think you come to that point of taking the water baptism? Because of the Holy Spirit. He begins to witness. He begins to show you the things of God. He exposes Jesus Christ. He exposes his holiness and your unworthiness. He exposes that, praise God. And we see our condition as God sees us. We're lost and undone. We needed saving. We needed a Savior. And that Holy Spirit continues to work in us to draw us to the point where we finally, we finally release, we finally surrender, and the Holy Spirit comes in. I love what James writes. 
He takes the tongue, the most unruly member of the body, and he takes control of the tongue. That's the last thing that goes when the Holy Spirit comes and the evidence of speaking in tongues Amen. takes place. And just what James said. He takes the last unruly member of the body. We finally surrender. We finally stop not believing that we're worthy and just accept and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes in pursuing God, we're our own worst enemies. And that's where no condemnation, no, I'm worthless. Some, a young person said to me several weeks ago, said, I, I just don't think I'm, I'm gonna make it. He's baptized with the Holy Ghost, I don't think I'm gonna make it. I think I'm, I'm, I'm just too weak. That's the enemy. That's what the enemy wants you to see. Oh, we got to see Jesus. Amen. Look to Jesus, the author. We don't look at ourselves. We look at ourselves. That's right. I, I can't make. I'm weak. I, I have my, my sin. I, I have my thoughts. And, and I go astray. But no, don't look at you. Look at Jesus. He'll take you through. He'll cause you to be victorious. My oh, brother, I messed up. My life is a mess. I haven't followed the Lord. I, my marriage, my relationships, whatever the case may be, are all messed up. I, I just don't know. Well, God's in the fix it, fix it for business. You see, He can fix it. I love it. I think it's in Jeremiah. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? We gotta come. We gotta come right down on this. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Can God save my marriage? Can God save my husband? Can God save my wife? Can God do a miracle in my family? Can He do it? Is it possible? The One who created the heavens and earth with the spoken word of His mouth, can He do it? Oh, hallelujah! Yes, He can. Because he's God. Glory to his name. And that day, praise God, when the trumpet sounds, you and I are going up. The Holy Spirit within us is going to take us out of the grave if we're in the grave. And we which are alive are going to be caught up in the air. Oh, I love that this morning. You folks really believe that stuff? Oh, absolutely you believe it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. The word is sure, it cannot lie. What he said, shall he not do it? Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning, brother and sister. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Say, Lord, would you help us? Stir up the gift of the Holy Ghost within us. You have received the baptism of power. Of power. That word power is dunamis in the Greek. That's where we get the word dynamite. It's power, praise God. Power. I'm going to close right here. Brother, sister, would you come forward? I'm about to get carried away. I'm going to close with that first verse. There is not, therefore now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It is a progressive walk with the Lord. We don't first contact with the Lord. We don't learn. We don't receive everything that God has for us. It's like trying to give a baby a hero sandwich. They can't, you know, they, they just can't digest it. It's the same thing with us. It's the, by the milk. We're fed with the milk. And we get stronger. And we desire more. And we desire more. And pretty soon we, we matriculate to the material, to the, to the solid, more solid foods. And so it is in the spirit. Lord, help us to grow. 
Not to be stuck in a, in a plateau. Not to be stuck in an elementary stage. But help us to grow. Amen. Praise God. That you might be pleased. That we might glorify you. And we might receive all the blessings that he has. Oh, praise God. I don't hear this word preached very often. I don't hear these scriptures read about being in Christ. Everybody's in Christ today. Go to church, you're in Christ. Say the sinner's prayer, you're in Christ. No, that's not what the word says. The word is very specific. And you and I, brother and sister, want to be in Christ, do we not? We want to be in Christ. And he is, he is willing. He has supplied every need. All things have been given to pertain unto life and godliness. God says, I can't ask you to live to a certain standard and not give you the tools or the equipment or the power to be able to do it. What kind of God would I be? I want you to jump. I, I want you to do the, the high jump, eight feet. And, you know, you don't have that strength or ability. God doesn't require us to do things that we can't do because he helps us. He gives us the Holy no. Spirit that allows us to do the will of God. Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. I love that. I love that this morning. Lord, would you help us? Would you open our minds? You that are not baptized, you know we preach the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some might say too much. I say not enough. But not just the baptism. I want to balance it. Walking in the Spirit. Amen. It's not just a baptism as a label, as I said earlier. It's not just a name. It's not a badge we wear. I'm qualified now. I'm baptized. Wonderful. But are you walking in that Spirit? That's why He gave you the Holy Spirit. That you might walk in that Spirit. That you might be sensitive to the things of God. That you might do the will of God. That you might... That you might Believe that you might be stronger, that you might help someone else. Jesus said in the Great Commission, go out into all the world. Teaching, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and, and commanding them, and, and doing all things that I have commanded you. He, how do we do that? Without the power of this. Oh, I know people got baptized, they went out and witnessed and passing out tracts and and whatever, and all with good intentions. I don't, I'm not being critical. But we got to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's got to guide us to be successful, not to bring shame to his name. But the Holy Spirit instructs us. The Holy Spirit leads us. Remember Paul and Silas, uh, they prayed, Lord, we wanted to go to Asia or Bithynia and Holy Spirit suffered them not to go and they he saw in a dream come over and help us in Macedonia. The Holy Spirit has to lead. The Holy Spirit has to guide. Even with talking with our families. Brother Ron, there's no opportunity. It's a dead subject. We've agreed not to, not to bring it up in family meetings because it's a dead subject. I understand that. You know what they can't stop you doing? It's praying. Yeah. Oh, praise God. You can pray. Remember the testimony on Lake Sam and Jim Chetta? They used to be into racing. Those cars. and They would miss church on Sundays because they were racing all the time. And it seemed like they'd lose every Sunday. And the brothers said, you know, Mom must be praying again. We say that in jest, but I, I got to believe that's true. I really do. Lord, would you thwart our actions and just bring us back. Bring us back where you want us to be. God loves us so much. He, 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 the, the feeling of conviction is because of love. When you correct your children, is it because you don't love them? No. You correct them because you love them. I don't want to see you get hurt. I don't want to see you take a wrong turn. I don't want to see you make a mistake. You're not punishing them. It's the caution light. Slow down. Be careful. 
Holy Spirit, help us this morning. May it be praise. Amen. Do we have a song?